Welcome back to another Evil Gin Magic episode of the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we take the movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, joined as always by my friend, co-host, and guy who likes to casually hang in jail, <laughs> Alex Dandino. All right, you guys know the deal. It's the October Mega Marathon. We're now in the in the deep, right? So 31 days, 31 pods. We look forward to it every year. But before we continue our journey uh, with the gin in Wishmaster 2, Evil Never Dies, a little bit of business, people. It's official. We are on Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod. The best way to help us make your podcast dreams come true. Uh, go over, guys, for as little as a dollar a month, and I assure you every single dollar helps. You get in, see what we're working on, join the community. As you climb the Highlander tier ranking systems, you get access to a Patreon-exclusive episode library. You get commentaries, mini miniseries. Um, you can even select a double feature of your choosing that we will do just for you and the other patrons. So... Again, that's patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod. We appreciate the support so, so much. We're working really hard, not just on the 31 days uh, October marathon, but also for the Patreon. So all the support means the world to us for those of you who already do. For those of you who are about to, thank you as well. If you can't support financially, we get it, man. Uh, There are some easy things you can do to help the show out as well, right? You can tell your friends. You can find us on social media, right? Invite your friends to like what we're doing, right? Share, retweets, all that good stuff, Uh, especially the Mega Marathon. Let's bring more people in on this, man. Uh, You can leave us rating and reviews wherever you find the show and other pods, right? Uh, Anywhere and everywhere. More than one is great. Five star, couple sentences while you like hanging out with us. Help us defeat the algorithmic prison guards that just won't let us make wishes come true. You know what I mean? Go to YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Film Alchemist. Email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Uh, if you guys just want to chat or whatever, we are easy to get a hold of and we love to hear from everyone. So however you can, guys, thank you for so much support. This is a gargantuan undertaking and every year you guys are so awesome. You make it so much fun for us. Uh, thank you in advance. All right. Enough of that pappy crap. Let's get into the nitty gritty of the fucking human heart. Or the gin's opal. Or both. Did you watch Wishmaster 1? And you said, this is fine. But what I need is a little more Creed video aesthetic. <laughs> I need a little bit more, this could be a porno moments. Yeah, a lot right? of that. Yeah. Did you wish that there was just a lot less gin and a lot more Andy? If you did... <laughs> Boy, have I got a fucking movie for you. Wishmaster 2. <laughs> Evil never dies. Um, This movie makes some fucking choices, man. This movie makes some choices. It doubles down on the Christian mythology angle. Mm-hmm. The director was definitely way too much a fan of Tank Girl. Um, There's a lot <laughs> happening in this movie. And it all comes at you real fast, right? This is a movie that just starts with an art hi- heist. Um, yep. People get shot up. I like the art up. heist start. Yeah, we find out that the people that are stealing the world's... Not where I expected this movie to begin. Yeah, we just start with the theft of the world's ugliest Yet painting. here we are. And yep, yep. we find out that the girl who gets shot's named is Morgana. Morgana. Right, because... You know what I don't wish for? Subtlety. That's what I don't want. I want, I want to go all the way in. Um... So this is this is a strange, strange sequel. But I think for all of the, the weirdness of it, what I think it really does is I think they realized that, uh, God damn it, I forget the name again, Andrew Devoff. Devoff, right? I keep wanting to say Driven, like he's from fucking The Crow or something. Andrew Devoff um, is the fucking monument that this franchise should be built around and so i think the movie um really focuses in and lets him play and have a lot of fucking fun and by proxy a lot of fun for us so alex opening thoughts on wishmaster 2 evil never dies well you know they can't all be winners uh (laughs) um, 
How dare you? Sorry, I meant the uh, individual. I wish making... we could have a little bit better tone about Wishmaster 2. I actually, what I was getting at was I meant the people making wishes. Certainly not. Certainly not. Oh good yeah, yeah. This is one where they. This is kind of where Freddy became a cartoon and. Jason, you're like, oh, I wonder how he's going to kill counselors. This movie is just like, let's skip the like three or four movies and just immediately make every character in this movie pretty, pretty disposable. We're not really going to yeah. root for anyone in this movie and just let the I mean, gen wreak havoc on everyone. Yeah, I mean, for me, we're starting at like, I mean, from the jump, it is yeah. some of the, again, uh, Look, I love for one, I, I love Jack Shoulder. Like he's a like he directed Freddy too. Like I think it's like easily one of the greatest horror sequels of all time. This one starts in such an interesting place. Like, first off, I don't know about you. Art Heist on the list of ways for a Wishmaster sequel to begin, Art Heist was not even close to like the top fifty, I would say. Yeah, uh, I, I wonder what happened to, to Beaumont or whatever, right? What happened to Robert England after that party that never happened where he's just like, oh, I'll let my fucking ancient statue go to the museum. Yeah, I'm assuming um, that he probably uh, probably went to Greece or something and just lives his life yeah. now. Um, probably was but, lost to Greece in one of those orgy parties. But that's neither here nor Yeah, there. well, speaking of orgy parties, <laughs> I don't know if you... I don't know if you picked this. So, like, our first... So, basically, like... Morgana and her uh, Morgana. BF, um, they uh, they're they're fucking um, they're doing they're pulling this heist that doesn't go well. When he gets shot and like the first impetus, like so, like the the um, the opal uh, breaks open. It's basically the same setup as we had before. When the yeah. opal breaks open, it breaks get... over her heart, right? Yeah. Saving the, her. The gin, um, yeah, he like shoots. Her. Basically, yeah. So it breaks. The gin's released. I don't know about you. Rebirth. Yeah, I got a really nice, like uh, almost society vibes from his birth. Uh, mm, yeah, because it, it was starts a little as more, like uh, chewing gummy this time. Yeah, it starts as like a booger on the wall, and then he like you know <laughs> basically births his face forth. Yeah, because the uh, the boyfriend gets shot. Kind of like, Majin Buu's his way into existence. Yeah, yeah, he's like <laughs> slow, he's sitting there like slowly dying, and then um the but like. Again, the um, he's slowly dying. He's like, I wish I'd never been born. <laughs> it's like, I love it. It's like a Max Headroom, like, rewind. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, it looks like a fucking tool video. You're like, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> right. he, he, let, me, let me just he, stop he, here, because he, this is a wildly important moment up top to kind of set you up for the rest of the movie. By the way, first so, time a real wish has happened in these two movies. We get like a real wish. Not only that. So the last movie, right? I'm assuming if you come in to watch Wishmaster 2, you probably liked Wishmaster 1. Right. The very first moment we see the djinn, right? He asked this guy, hey, uh, do you wish you weren't dying from a bullet wound? I wish I was never born, right? Like kind of right. a down on his luck story. So the djinn who was defeated by a Doctor Who style time paradox in the last film. The very first thing we do in this movie is he goes, oh, sick. I'll do another time paradox. Rewinds and erase this guy all the way down to baby. I'm assuming at the end it's just a jacket with sperm on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Who definitely. knows how the jacket's there? Here's another thing. If he's not over there fucking clapping it with Morgana, this heist might not ever happen. And the movie just right up front is saying, oh, we're going to take the whole time paradox shit out of the running. Right? Because this guy... Fully disappearing into semen yeah. has no bearing on anyone or the world around him as if he doesn't matter. It's a reverse. It's a wonderful life where they just go, oh, this guy literally didn't matter at all. Do you think this is – do you actually – I was thinking about this. Do you think this is the Jin learning his lesson from the first one? No. He's like, I'm not, I'm not getting caught with that shit again. I think this is the <laughs> filmmaker saying – we may not have studied very much before we made this film and we're just going for awesome and watching the guy fucking, you know, Benjamin button his way back to the fucking, uh, you know, stain on the coat. Yeah. It was pretty fun. It was pretty good. fun. Cause this is the other thing. They do two things right off the bat. That's pretty much a fuck you. If you're one of these guys, that's like Wishmaster cannon, which I don't know who that guy would be. I wouldn't want to meet him. Yeah, no. 
I wish that that guy would never cross my path, right? Because here's the thing. Not only do they just say, oh, we don't give a fuck about time paradoxes anymore, Yahtzee. Right. They immediately, the cop fucking pulls a gun on him, right? Because he's just, oh, well, wow, there's a, you know, piranha-faced man who I guess just kept that last face. Didn't have to get a new one. Right. right. Uh, he's here glaring at us over a dead body. This seems like an open and shut case. And he goes, freeze. And he goes, you would like that? He goes, yeah, freeze. <laughs> and he... Mr. Freezes him. Chill. Chill. And I was like, in no fucking universe is saying freeze to a fucking a murder suspect a wish. That is an order. It's a command. It's a verb. It's Which, a lot of way, fucking things. It is not a wish. We established in the first movie with the Tony Todd beat, orders are not wishes. That's right. Kane Hodder, too, and he's like, get out of here. I want you to get out of here, whatever. So... The movie right off the bat is telling us this is the Jin's playground movie. We don't give a fuck about the rules, which is no funny because by the end of the movie, the Jin starts doing this. There are rules even I can't break. And you're like, really? Are you Fucking sure? Really? Have like, you read the books? Are you sure? This yeah. is an unstudied Jin, it, it appears. <laughs> But anyways, and, and again, I think that's fine, man. I think sometimes what happens to these franchises is people get so beholden, right? Like you see this a lot right. in Halloween when it's like, oh, now they're related and now yeah, this yeah. and now there's a cult and they get really bogged down in, in canon and right. trying to build upon it. I think it's kind of refreshing for the movie to go, nope, fuck that. It's an <laughs> all new fucking uh, wish thing. The djinn just wants to go to jail. The Jinn, for some reason, needs 800 souls this movie. Do we know why? Nope. He's still fucking... And this is the other thing. The guy that shot the Opal, why isn't he the one that summoned him? Why is it the girl? We don't know. And they don't care to answer. These are just questions. So this is the Ernest goes to jail mixed with <laughs> how much can they make us watch the worst romance journey that I have seen in a long, boy, long oh boy. while. Oof. it's <laughs> it's at once like very christian like straight to dvd movie also very kind of porny like they're like you know what if instead of you know this this woman who's going through it has a job she's kind of fighting she's a basketball coach what if yeah. we just put like tank girl sweating in bed like four times yeah there's a lot of intense like it, it is like it's got it's a veritable pornucopia it, it is erotic Vibes. in a weird way for where the movie starts heading later yeah <laughs> and so it is this just weird blend so i would say i don't know if you agree i think the human story in this movie i don't know if i can do better than just absolute turd like just a turd <laughs> uh the decision of the movie is essentially here's the, this lady and her boyfriend right yeah. They're they're criminals, they're thieves. They live in a pretty nice apartment, so they must do this all the time, right? Gets it killed, needs help, goes to an ex-boyfriend who's become a priest. The priest seemingly only took this job to fucking occupy his time before they fuck again. Right. Right? And it's just this very strange, like, what am I supposed to be sinking into here? What am I supposed to be taking from this part of the movie? I'll say this. The last one, again, like Wishmaster is rarely a movie that I would say this with, but um, I got to be honest. I, I, it's very, I, I was really rooting for the gin this one. Like I was like, dude, take yeah. it on the task. Yeah. The last like, one, whatever her name was, Amy, like, Amelia, what was the character? Anyway, in part Alex, one, Alex. Yeah. Alexandria. In the part one, you're, you're, you are bonded to Alexandria. You're like, yeah, I want her to fucking beat this monster. I'll enjoy the monster killing. Yeah. This one, I don't even remember who these fucking characters' name are. I just kept calling them Tank Girl and Boner Priest. Those were the characters <laughs> in my head. Yeah. I mean, I mean every scene is shot like a fucking porno. They are deeply... I, this is like... It's funny. Like, we're talking, we were talking about this at the very beginning. Like, before mm -hmm. we started recording, but, like, this is like this, like, playground movie, basically. Like, yeah. it's essentially... And you think about it, like, I think about movies like this a lot. Because I've seen a lot of, <laughs> we talk a lot about movies that are just like, they feel like f fan service. Again, I don't know who the fans of Wishmaster are that needed this. No. But it's one of those things where you think about it and you're like, 
all right, like if I was 13 years old and watching this movie, like watching the first one, I'd be like, man, you know what'd be cool if you like went to jail and just like fucked around. Okay, like, but this is the thing. That's the movie we want. Never right. take this movie out of fucking jail. The detective is the one who gets the stone right. Do that kind of a thing, right? Totally. And then now it's just fucking Wishmaster in jail. Because every scene at the jail, fucking Gold. rules. Gold. Fucking rules. Starting Even with the, the casino fact that he at just... the end is not bad, right? But the jail is where this movie sings. That's where yeah. it's like, hey, Absolutely. we know you guys love the gin, and we're going to just dial it up to a Spinal right. Tap 11. Like, you're these like yeah, normal bitch. people but like this like the the again the people like tank girl and boner priest yeah it's one of those things where you're like i just don't care about anything no. these people are doing yeah and you're like the priest is there to do the they this is another one of those like griffy catnip things in movies yeah, one yeah. of my absolute favorite things is a movie monster pretending to be afraid of a cross like a holy man like be gone demon like so ah, good. <laughs> and then they laugh so the priest confronting pure evil and realizing he maybe is not as committed to being a man of the cloth as he wants. Right, he's right. scared when he confronts actual evil. He's like, oh, my God, all the, all these stories aren't bullshit. Like, there's actually shit out here. Right. That's an interesting enough way to go. They don't utilize it. Yeah. Halfway through the movie, it's like he's like, well, someone pure has to send him back to the gym. She's like, <laughs> not me. And then for some reason, I don't know if I like went to get a drink of water i missed something because i come back and she's like i know how to do this i'll sh chop my hair off cut my finger off and do like a hail mary and now the rest of the movie i'll wear a fucking sundress and a sweater and i'm in right so now she's like trying to be this pure slayer and then a scene later it's like a yo-yo right because she does that she chops her finger off we don't Did address I miss it. something she chops her fucking <laughs> finger off to right. become pure again, right? A sacrifice right, right, right. to God. I remember that right? part. And then they come back. She, you know, do some shit with the Russian mafia, right? She comes back, and her and the priest are definitely about to fuck. And the priest goes, hey, I don't think this is the way into heaven. And she goes, you'd be surprised. And I was like, oh, so now that shit's just thrown out the window. You're literally corrupting a man of the cloth with your fucking missing fingers. Like, what are you doing? Like, how is this purity? Or maybe she saw him at, she tried to shoot him at the Russian mob. And she's like, purity sucks. I'm out. <laughs> because this is the other thing, too. It's a, it's another loophole or a legal argument, a precedent that God is setting. Right. So she cuts her finger off, fucks this priest, right? Makes him break his vow of the cloth. Right, right. Goes to the fucking thing. And at the end of the movie, the big trick is, right? We don't have a time loophole this time. We have her saying, I wish I hadn't shot that guy who had a family. Right. And then she can start the, you know, the fucking chance of the alchemist and trap him. So I was like, God, not OK with you killing an innocent man. Definitely likes you chopping your finger off and violating a man of the cloth. Right. Although I guess the man of the cloth violates himself because he says yes. But she definitely calls her pussy heaven and says, let's rock. Or one of her orifices. <laughs> right. Or all of them combined. That's the gates to heaven. She is now St. Peter. And she wants him to pearly gate all over her. And God goes, wow, nice. God gives the fucking stamp of approval. Unless you God cut off gives, another finger or two in the scene. God gives the stamp of approval. I think that's what's interesting. Is like, God yeah, gives the God, stamp of the approval. God gives a stamp of approval on not negating murder. What happened to vanity is a sin, right? My pussy's heaven. Apparently. Apparently. God Boastful. is totally cool with premarital sex, by the way. <laughs> it's not even the pre. She's violating a man of the cloth sex, that needs his fucking a man of the cloth. power to go battle yeah. a demon, potentially. Basically making a guy break his vow of celibacy. And not making. This priest was obviously ready to fucking throw yeah. well, that collar off to, immediately. Right. Well, I mean, you also have to consider, like, th this. Actually, okay. This is the thing that, like, they totally God hates get, the priesthood. And he well, likes God, God high-minded pussy metaphors. God absolutely hates Catholicism, but that's like the best part about the movie. Because <laughs> you're like, cool. True. All of this tracks because Catholics are terrible. Like, I yeah. get it. Absolutely. Because Wish.com Michael Bean wants to fucking get plowed. 
You know what I mean? He's just like, well, I was a priest, but I've really just been waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, like, that's the part that makes total sense to me, actually. Like, God's like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, yeah. you guys do you. These yeah. people suck anyways. Totally fine. They even do this really lame the devil sh- moment where, like, Gregory becomes Jesus. And I was like, good Lord. Like, you really are overestimating. This, this reeks of, like, a time period thing where they're like, well, we need a couple of hot people to kind of like wrestle each other to that's what the audience wants i'm like fucking no throw that shit away like it it needs to really matter or be much more titillating if it's gonna work and this was not so anyways fuck those humans fuck those people can we get back to the real movie which is let's get back to wish master to it gin and jail gin and jail what a fucking rules so great it's fucking awesome. I love all the kills. Of course, because this is the thing, right? He's like all the kills, he, all the he syntax goes in errors. And he, he essentially admits he's like a kid in the candy shop, right? Yeah, yeah. Where he loves. Again, we have another him specifically not following the wish. <laughs> this is the most abrasive uh, kind of testing the boundaries, right? Where he, the guy in the cell is pretty much like, "I'm gonna fucking beat your golf playing ass," and he's like, "Yeah, what's your wish?" And he goes, I want to walk right through the bars and out of the jail. And he goes, granted. And the guy gets squeezed through the bars and it's fucking cool. Yeah. In what universe can that puddle <laughs> get up and walk out of the jail? The gin is a you. liar. I, I know he's a you. liar, but I feel like he should have a little more artistic integrity. <laughs> That's with exactly his fucking what I rewrite. <laughs> That is exactly what I wrote down. I literally wrote this gin. This gin has no honor. <laughs> no honor. Literally. And I know he's like a fucking hell beast, but literally. But come on. He has no integrity. He's like that guy. I, like he's like the kid. He should have prepared grade. us for Game of Thrones. Honestly. Remember when you were in like seventh grade and you do like peer review of like papers and stuff yeah. like that. And you had the one like there was always one person in class who got straight A's in English and. And they'd edit your essay for you and, like, give you, like, really harsh notes on, like, syntax. That's, like, the gin throughout this entire movie is, like, "Uh, yes, of course. Let me twist your words real quick and also not listen to them at all. Yeah. That is literally what's happening, roughly, especially in that moment. That one particular, like, you're not even paying attention anymore. You're you're just enjoying this. Artists should have a little more integrity. If you're going to be an artiste, that's what I think. What I, think. What, I agree. That's what I no think. No integrity. None. In no fucking manner. If he was called before his boss, God, right. in a defending your <laughs> lifestyle, Albert Brooks scene, right. and God just goes, come on, man. Come on. Come what on. the you're fuck? He's like, how is that walking? And he's like, I pushed him through the bar. And he goes, yeah, push. That has a specific meaning. So does walk. Yeah. Like, come on. He's like. It was funny. It's like, God damn it, shit. (laughs) Demoted. Assistant to God. Okay, do you like... Here's here's another thing, too. (laughs) Going through the rest of these Wishmaster movies, because I thought about this after we finished the first one. Going into this one, do you think, as far as Jin rankings, do you think this one is, like, the worst one? Like, like, let's say there's, like, a group of ten of them. Oh, this is great. So, by the end of this franchise, we should make uh, his most egregious lies for Wishes. (laughs) Right, I yeah. think in the first one, the Tony, the party itself is, I mean, that's taking a lot of leeway, the but Tony I get Todd it. The Tony Todd one is a lot of The liberties. Tony Todd one is pretty much horse shit. Also, like, really elaborate for a thing, and you're just like, why, guys? Also, really, yeah, like, too specific, and you're like, that's what, that's what he the, wants. It feels like but the that reason even you did a little it for closer. the Houdini line. Yeah. This guy specifically said, he didn't just say, I want to get out of this cell. He said, I want to walk out of the jail that is incontrovertible (laughs) linguistically yes so the jinn just fucking violated violated their rights however he violated the artist patron (laughs) fucking here's the thing yes the next one though he makes up for it and he does he i will say the literal version of what he does next the, and now this is a to the T. <laughs> this is, I understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, and I will yeah. not interpret them any other way. 
This this was a paint by number wish. I know exactly what I need to do here. I gotta be honest. I'll with say you. this moment though is fucking awesome beyond the yeah. comedy. The, this moment alone <laughs> deserves so much. Like this deserves to be in a best of list. Like this is one of those great like so obvious and like it's first off like like technically really funny. Like it's yeah. so funny to watch. Yeah, but. Also, and I don't know how you felt, like the first time you watched, I don't know how many times you've seen this one. Mm -hmm. The first time I watched this one, I can tell you, which by the way was today, I can tell you right now, that was not what I expected it to be. Like when they say, right. when he says, I want my lawyer to fuck himself. Like, yeah. I, and when it starts happening, I'm like, oh, cool. He's going to have like a butt baby and the butt baby is going to fuck him. Jesus, that's what, see now that is an artistic reinterpretation. I agree, but that's here's the like, thing: we we're comic readers. That's that's what well, that's what I'm set up for. And so the famous this, the this famous rascal. version of this for comic readers is Preacher, yeah, where Jesse goes, "Go fuck yourself" Go with fuck the voice yourself. the voice of God, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy rips his dick off and crams it up his own ass, right? That's pretty close to what I thought was going to happen. Same. Maybe like a brutal fisting, right? Like I don't know. Um, I still am not sure of the mechanics of how this happened because there's not nearly enough screaming. It's a lot of, oh, oh, oh right. Oh. It's like a, like a commercial for like the poops. Yeah. Right. And you hear like some legs popping so out. So what you place. see are, yeah, his feet rise up. Like he's doing a leg <laughs> curl. They turn on him like little cobras. Yeah. And then he just starts getting humped. Yeah. By himself. So I was like, so his. Legs turn for no reason. The legs have no benefit in the fucking no. yourself. Yeah. And so I don't know if the dick had to grow and come around like a like a self-feeding hose reel. Like, you know, yeah. a garden hose reel. Yeah, yeah. Or if There's his entire pelvis moved. Yeah, and I was like, I'm not sure of the physics at all. But whatever landed in that final shot of this man is, oh, 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 oh. 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 I thought that. And then the prisoner like, he's sick. He's sick. And I was like, yeah, no shit. Like something's very wrong. But what I love about this moment, this is one of the first times I've seen this in the franchise. And I loved it because the guy's like my fucking lawyer. Right. You see that a lot in prison movies. Right. My lawyer fucked up. He didn't care. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's a public defender. Right. An overworked, underpaid guy. Right. 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 He comes in for his meeting and he's all fucking pissed. And the guy's like, dude, I, you know, something didn't sit right with your case. So I went the extra mile. I worked hard and I found. Again, he found a legal slip up that's going to let him off and maybe get damages from the police. Not that he's innocent. Right. But he he did the work and he's like, I'm going to get you out. And the guy's like, really, man? That's like, I'm going to get out of here. And that's when the man. wish hits. So it's almost as if the gin gave the lawyer the information so that then the lawyer would come in, get this guy's hopes up and then crush his soul in front of him. And that is so much more nefarious and kind of is buried by the comedy of watching a man's legs hump himself. Yeah. But that moment is fucking vile. And it really it really was like, oh, man, this movie's got some fucking teeth still. Right. As I'm laughing at, like, the squeaky toy sound effects. Right, right. right. Anywho, another but one it's... in the prison that kind of let me down a little bit. The big guy that kind of has like a, a facial very hair set up like me. Very disappointing. Because he had one that was so funny. He was like, I want to get wasted. want to get wasted. He said the exact line, I want to get tore up from the floor up. And I was like, here we go. Here we go. Something cool. Yeah, I want to see the Salvador Dali-like impression of whatever this is going to be. <laughs> and then yeah, it's totally. cool, too, because this guy, for some reason, just has two twin martial artists as his henchmen. Yeah. We've seen him around. The guy's really good at bringing that, like, prison bully energy. Yep, and I was yep. like, oh, my God, this is going to be awesome. This is going to yeah. be great. And then it's just, like, some karate fighting onto, like, a hot press. It's just so disappointing. This is the one kill in the movie that I was like, that's pretty weak. It's a little weak. Yeah, it's very weak. It was the – it was – it truly – because I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, tore up from the floor up, like – yeah, is the floor I was so just excited. Gonna, <laughs> is the floor just going to, like, drag him down? Like, what is going to, like, something cool. 
Yeah. And yeah, it's I wonder literally how this like, guy's going to hump himself. <laughs> yeah, and just nothing. Well, it's one of those things where like you watch it and you're like, oh, I guess we ran out of money during this scene. We didn't want to do We couldn't do anything super cool. Yeah. Because even the scene, right, when he faces down um, Tiny Liston, right, the, mm-hmm. the guard. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I want one minute to dance with you, Compton style. Compton style. He cuts to this red room and he's like fully. And now they've got money now. They put some money into the fucking Jin's body. And the first one, it kind of yeah. looked like bug they got therapist. Some, they got some budget back. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the fucking bod's looking good. And he just goes, the, let's Yeah. The, w- the first emergence of the Jin is that little bug. It looks like um, mm-hmm. Gary Oldman in the Lost in Space remake. Like, it has that vibe. It's a real not good suit. This one, he's kind of got some pecs with, like, runes and shit in them. Uh, yeah. Good suit. And you see Tiny List and scream. And that, for those of us who know his his work, that elicits a response. And right. then he comes out and he's like, how'd you like to get out of this prison? And then he he does the gen voice. You're like, oh, my God. He took his whole fucking skin and everything. And we see a cop react to the corpse that we don't see. So it's like, even though that one doesn't show us explicitly the the carnage... It still manages the effect that the tore up from the floor up, though. That is a a missed opportunity of Titanic proportions, I feel like. Big time. Big time. Because, yeah, I so th- essentially, yeah, he's in jail. He's playing around. He realizes he's exhausted his supply, right? So this is where I like his sidekick in this movie. I thought this was an awesome character to add, right? When mm-hmm. he, um, what's his line? He goes, everyone needs help, even the devil. And I thought that was such a cool sentiment, right? Like, I'll do whatever the fuck it takes. I will make a deal with the devil, and I believe it just to get out of here, right? And then you see him when he goes to his Russian mafiosos, right? And he's, like, braggadocious and talking shit um, right. until he sees the actual face of the djinn. And I thought this was a really cool arc for a, a small side character to add to the story. Because I think this is one of the things, right, that's fun about Wishmaster is imagining how easy it would be to get any one of us to say something we wish was different. Right. Or like, maybe I could control the gen, right? I think it's really cool to take that character who seemingly is winning. And then he sees the fucking pure face of it and can't fucking stand it. I thought that was a really cool ad. Yeah. Well, no, I liked, I think the sidekick beat is really good because yeah. it does. It does also do that thing that like, um, vampire movies do mm-hmm. like i always end up liking the side character like even like movie yeah. like besides just like the original dracula like even like uh like and i love vampire in brooklyn with eddie murphy like um i can't remember that actor's name the guy from a different world but either way like yeah like i always like the side i like the side character and then yeah when you realize when they realize what you that you know they reaped what they sowed it's mm-hmm. you know again it's a great it's a great bit. Also, that bit in that scene, like where they're the showdown with the mafiosos. Yeah. Oh, it, that's a see. That's a perfect wish. That was a good. That one. was an awesome. Great one. wish. Yeah. yeah. I want his head, and then all of a sudden, he just looks like the man he hates Again, the most. The gin awesome. is listening, hearing people through, yes. hearing hearing it out. That is taking the audience suggestion good and job. improving with it. <laughs> Right? That's yeah. using the tools that's, given to you. That's great improv. That this gin is getting it. See, I That like, is I, a great moment in the movie. Because also the tear and the rage on the guy's face as he looks in the mirror and sees his most hated enemy's face. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, it's a great. small moment in the film, but I love that shit. Oh, no, I don't disagree. I mean, I do, like, as we trudge through these Wishmaster movies, what I like to think of is this gin is the worst one. And he's just trying to make his bones. He's trying to prove that he's great. This is about the struggle. You think that he's like a, a fucking opening act and he's like, I'm coming for I the think, fucking tour bus? I think this gin is a Clarence and he's trying to prove, hey, I need my wings. That's I the 800 I, souls? He's like, I'm going to go get Bedford Falls real quick. I'm getting Bedford Falls Make it right Potterville. Now. Ah, maybe. I will ask you, do you think that the sidekick shot the woman with blanks and that's why he couldn't shoot and kill her in the bar because he goes if i kill you he can't release hell on earth were those blanks because then we see the wishmaster from the casino call and do his voice right yeah and so i was like was he in on it or did the wishmaster know that he had broken him how do you think those bullets didn't kill her oh i mean to be honest with you i thought he was just a bad shot 
but uh. or is it when you're bonded because they do the same thing right when she's having her sweaty um hey teenager you might want to jerk off to this yeah uh nightmares yeah yeah we see that she's kind of got that pumpkin head bond formed again right right so maybe oh, if maybe she's bonded it's... she's part of what's eternal and therefore that, i was gonna say destroyed. that's probably where that starts like again yeah. when i first watched it i just assumed he was a bad shot but yeah now that you're saying it like to me it has more to do with the eternal that yeah. like it's like the, the wish the bond, cannot change that's what the bond eternal. is also yeah. eternal at that point yeah until he's part, you, until she's part until of the release. game yeah so yeah. one of them has to win or lose you can't just make that away right yeah um yeah, that's interesting, man. I, I like that part, too. And I think right after that, that's when she's like, man, I survived bullets. God's on my side. We should fuck. And the priest is like, whew, throws his fucking vows over there, and they go for it. Um, Speaking, walk me through it, your thoughts on the casino at the end of the movie. <laughs> I mean, don't you just love sets? Like, like It this seemed is, like it would have been a fun time. Not for the art is, department, but... <laughs> this is one of these things, like... And I don't, like there was that time in the late '90s where all these like directed directed DVD sequels were coming out, and it feels like they all used these like <laughs> these like flats. Yeah, like every single one of them. Like I love. There's okay. It's it's little. So when they like basically catch up with him when he's like running the casino, that shot of him behind his desk. With the big fucking horn sticking It's awesome, out. though. I'm like, God damn, dude. Like, that is just the best. It's kind of a an in-your-face opulence. Yeah. That this one movie of those has not earned like, at all. <laughs> it's one of those things where I was watching it. I was like, how psyched was that art? It was like the set dresser saying, like, I found this shit. We are using it. Yeah. Like, that is like, that's that's the kind of stuff. Like, the those, gin, like, little... he, he fucking sees the, uh, the fucking ca- cattle desk, and he's like, my wishes are coming true. <laughs> and now my wishes would come true yeah like i mean it's like it's that kind of uh, stuff but i mean like look when we get to when we get to the vegas stuff i'm just like we are really on a lovely roller coaster with this guy it's like kind he's of just, the point he's like, having a great time he's hamming it up and we're doing this thing where it's like we don't care about the fucking porno priest yeah and she no. makes there is this thing that they're doing at the end where she makes like 15 wishes yeah Right? I wish you were this. And he's like, you can't. You can't. I'm a turtle. I said I'm a turtle. God damn it. I'm still a turtle. Yeah, Stop. That, please, God. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, like, for fuck. It's like that sakes. scene from Aladdin where they're going through a booze. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Yeah. <laughs> Bumba Jadot. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a fucking lot. And somehow from there, right, he, he makes Gregory the Jesus and, like, that goes down south. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know what'll really fucking make? Because this is the thing. The djinn doesn't get her to make one fucking wish until no. the wish that defeats him. He's not even fucking close. Again, God's fucking laughing stock. So, you know what he does? He's like, well, I already killed the priest that she fucking, you know, stuck it to. Right. And he's like, you know what she'll really care about? Let's get some of these fucking Midwestern polo socks and sandals types and fucking put them in a UFC cage. Isn't it weird? What? Like, this is now two movies in a row, by the way, that we have, like, don't you care for all these randos? Like, yeah. no. Like, I, again, the gen mistakes. is so fucking bad that's at That's what his I'm saying. Job. What I'm saying is that's, like, the gen's trying to prove himself. He keeps making the same mistakes. Stop yeah. putting, like, Stop like the jinn believes he is a god elevated above us and that is his folly. And right. God knew that, that's why there're no actual <laughs> threats. Cuz if you can't come to this art thief and just say, "Hey, do you want three wishes to have anything you want?" and you can't get her before she finds the world's worst website to research your ass. Yeah, come on. That's a you thing. That's a you thing. You're not doing your job. You're trying, but you're this not doing it. This was back when she had dial-up internet, the world's worst website, and the shittiest ex-boyfriend who's kind of a yeah. priest who waters plants. Like, this is the kind you of, had like, time to get her before yeah. that. She is a person that would easily take the wishes. She was going on, like, you know, in Carta to look you up. Like, you yeah. could have figured this out. Yeah. And How that's about what this? I'm saying. Kill the other police and don't go to jail. Don't have your fucking uh, sandals resort week 
And no, good. I mean, I'm glad he went to jail. I'm glad he went to jail. Sandals, no, I was saying, like, listen, listen. Yeah. Everyone deserves a break, even a gin, it, and he went to so jail. Going to jail is essentially rum springa for the gin. Yeah. Where he's he, like, I'm for the gin, go this was fuck wild. Yeah. He went to Sandals San hell on earth. Yeah. Yeah. But fine. he even says at one point, right? He's like, uh, hell is your world, not mine, right? He, he fucking deplores us. He can't stand it. Yeah, yeah. And somehow that weakness always shines through, right? And then God grants her, like, way to throw that ass. Thanks for bringing that guy back. Boom. Jim Guardian. And that's right. it. And then at the end, we get the God's eye view. We p- fucking fly into the fucking gin <laughs> in the opal, and we look at him like he's a court jester, this just, small little guy before a throne, not sitting like, on the throne. And he's like, man, get out of here. Yeah. And I was like, you little fucking loser. You little oh, fucking loser. He fucked loser. up again, man. You fucked up. He you fucked, fucked up, up again. He's trying hard. Yeah. He's going. He's doing his best, man. I'm just saying, if you can't convince a thief to make even one wish, you're bad at your job. What he's he, awesome at is entertaining me. Yeah, exactly. And doing really cool at, shit, but he's bad at his sp- that's stated what it task. Is. That's why he's the worst gin. Because all yeah. he ever does is thinks about himself. He's entertaining himself. Yes. He's not thinking about the other gins. Yes. And because he is God's messenger to take out some people we don't want. Right? The God doesn't sure, want. Sure, 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 He He has a built-in flaw. He can never fully win. This is God's yeah. cruel, cruel game. With us, right. with demons, with gins, right? He's just watching it. I don't know why God likes to watch this if he always knows the outcomes. I mean, you could say that maybe it's just a fucking weird old story that keeps manifesting itself in these fucking weird schlocky B movies. But who right, knows, right. man? Who knows? The djinn should be better at his job. Agreed. But we are learning some hard truths about God by the time this movie occurs. You're not wrong. I did want to point out one uh, casting note for this film, which very particular for Griff. Um, okay. Boner Priest. Yeah. One Paul Johansson. Yeah. Nick Wolf from the Highlander the series and its spinoff Highlander the Raven. <laughs> I mean, really high in the fucking cathedral <laughs> of Highlander in my mind. <laughs> yeah. I read that the day I'm like, fucking oh, man, Michael Bean that you left out in the car instead of putting it in the fridge. Way to go, dude. <laughs> Welcome to the car. But yes. no, that's, I mean, again, uh, the Wishmaster movies are hills and valleys. And are- this one made some choices, right? Did you ever watch Creed videos and think that it was a porn? That's what most of this movie plays as. Yeah. But then I mean- we just have, because this is the other thing too, we kind of hinted at, but I think it's really important in this movie that, that Andrew's character is so much more him mm-hmm. and so much less the gin. The gin is in there, but it's, I mean, he gets a lot of time on screen with just that fucking creep smile, those beady little eyes, and that I'm gonna eat your face off. Such a good job, just like like centering him in the frame so he can just do his. God bless it, man! Oh my god, he's such a fucking creep, and it's great. And just like, and just like, always positioned that way. And again, he is probably the best of the horror movie monsters when he's not in monster form. True. Right? Because we get some good Daniel Robitaille scenes from Candyman, but by the time he's doing cool stuff, he's always Candymanning, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The hook, the bees, whatever. This guy is just in his fucking Egger suit, fucking having a great time in jail, and he's fucking intense, man. Right. So, again, the movie gave us more fucking gen fun. It gave us more of Andrew. And it kind of right. slathered it I over like a, a two-day-old Salisbury steak that we didn't really want. But you I know, also really fun. like that um, the gin kept this look. Like, he didn't change yeah. the face. Like, I like that a lot. Yeah, it's, that's what I mean, right? He saw that face, and he goes, oh, this shit creepy. Oh, this is going to work. Yeah. This shit creepy. This going to keep me from – because this is the <laughs> thing. By the time you in, in this movie, you're like, so he kept the face. He went to yep. jail. He yep, can't yep. fucking turn a person who seemingly would be pretty easy. They're already a thief. They'd be pretty easy to get them to make a wish. Does he just hate his relatives? We see them like pushing at the walls. He's like, God, dad, be patient. And it's I'm like, telling you, bitch, you've had a ju- long I'm time. I'm telling you, he's just on vacation. 
He's like, just every chilling. time he every time he gets out, he's just what what's what what, what trouble can I get up to now? <laughs> Travel. He's yeah. He's like I just want to do my uh, you know, sisterhood of the traveling fucking opal bejeweled pants. That's what I'm. I'm just out here like <laughs> I'm doing me. I'm connecting. Listen, with I'm going to do me. You yeah. guys always do you. I'm going to do me. You've you've yeah. you're infringing on my vacation. And you know, yeah, the tank girl and the boner priest and the the still inexplicable. I'm going to chop my finger off and dress like Ali Sheedy at the end of Breakfast Club, and that'll make up for it. By the way, I saw on Twitter the other day someone said the biggest downgrade in movie history. Ali Sheedy at the start of Breakfast Club to her at the end, and I go, God damn it, I agree so much. True. Same thing in this movie. Don't fucking put on the the mom of four outfit if that's not you. She should have kept her fucking her vibe. Yeah. Downgrade. Don't, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't sheety yourself, guys. Don't do that. Don't sheety don't, yourself. Don't sheety yourself. Grow big. Like Wishmaster. Just do you, man. Do you. And let it fall how it may. That's your it. Best life. For Wishmaster 2, evil never dies. It just takes long just vacations goes on vacation. in jail. Yeah. <laughs> It just likes casinos and shit and being bad at his job. So you guys know the deal. 31 days, 31 pods. We love doing these entire franchise runs. So we'll be back tomorrow with Wishmaster 3. So again, guys, every day this month, a new pod. We're putting in a gargantuan amount of work to make this happen. Um, If you guys could help us out, we would greatly appreciate it. Share all the social media stuff about uh, the marathon about the movies we're doing. That would be really cool, man. Invite your friends. Tell your friends about it, man. I know you. if you're listening to us, you love movies. You got friends that love movies. Let them know what we're up to, man. It'd be a good time for all of us. Um, if you can, go to patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod. You'll get the extra remaining uh, October marathon movie, so you can have the full 31 days over there um, as Patreon exclusives. You can get in. You can vote on the movies you want to hear. Uh, you can pick your own movies as you go up the Highlander tier ranking system. We're working really hard there, too, as well as the main feed. So, again, that's patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod. Share the socials. Email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Uh, follow the YouTube channel, Film Alchemist, so you can see what faces we pick to cover our genie bodies. Um, and make sure you leave ratings and reviews. That's free, easy, and cheap. And it really helps shows like out, uh, us out a ton to help us find new audience uh, to make their wishes come true. Uh, so that's it, man. You guys know the deal. We'll be back tomorrow with Wishmaster tr- uh, 3. Tree? Beyond the Gates of Hell. Yeah, Wishmaster Tree. Wishmaster 3. Beyond the Gates Electric- of Hell. Electric Boogaloo. Ew, gross. <laughs> Wishmaster 2, the Nickelback porn movie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's it. Bye.